yeah, uh, excited for the opportunity to head up to starting stadium and, uh, you know, face a great Big Ten opponent. And uh, we've got to have a great week of preparation, and uh, kids are excited about it. George, fire away. I look back at your box score from last weekend, and one thing um, that, that struck me that I, I didn't notice right after the game is the sheer number of, of transfers on defense that contributed. Um, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Um, that you were able to to scope out that talent in the transfer portal, and they, they all come in and make make a contribution right away. Yeah, I think it was you know 40 new players on the roster for this season. I think 23 or 24 were portal guys, and probably half of that number on defense. But uh, yeah, they've you know a lot of them here since January, so we've had an opportunity to to you know be with uh, you know our coaching staff, our strength and conditioning guys, and you know get to know their teammates. So. Uh, yeah, it was, it was good to see them come out and make an immediate contribution. How – who impressed you most in that regard? On, def on defense? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think Victor Jones probably did the, the, the best job, probably had the most complete game out of all the transfers on the defensive side. Eight tackles, you know, a couple for loss, some quarterback pressures, you know, a tackle for loss. So, you know, he's a guy that had a great camp, you know, has had a nice career at Wyoming prior to entering the portal. And uh, – it certainly has a lot more in him. You know, we're expecting, uh, you know, for him to, you know, continually improve as the weeks progress. But, but it was a real nice start. Um, looking uh, forward this week, you know, I, I looked at Michigan State's highlights, and offensively, what worries you most about that team, or have you had a chance to to look at it yet? <laughs> yeah, everything about them worries me. Uh, to a certain extent, I mean, you start up front. You know, they average just about six five and you know three hundred and ten pounds. You know, both tackles are six 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 seven, and the interior guys are very physical and get a push. Uh, Berger and Broussard, both uh, transfers. You know, one from Wisconsin, one from Colorado. No, those guys uh, through the recruiting process I and mean, haven't played against Colorado. Uh, recruited Peyton Thorne a little bit at Penn State. You know, he's a great job operating the system. Can beat you with his arm and his legs. And then uh, you know Reed and Coleman on the outside, along with the tight ends, you know uh, you know they do a great job stretching the field vertically and, and are both deep play threats. I forget their quarterback's name, but he hit four different receivers for touchdowns the other day. Yeah, Peyton Thorne. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what kind of challenges that presents present for your your DBs. <laughs> a very significant one, you know, particularly because you know the the O line can protect. Uh, they do a great job mixing, uh, you know, play action passes, passes uh, off their most effective runs. So our, our DBs have to have great eye discipline when we're in zone, and you know, and then we're man to man, whether it's off or it's press. We got to do a great job because because the receivers all have good size and you know play the ball well in the air. I think I know the answer to this question, but I never want to assume. <sighs> Did we see everything from your offense the other night? Everything. I mean, uh, I, I mean, to a certain extent. Are you saving stuff for later? Well, I, I wouldn't say necessarily saving. I mean, to to a certain extent. I mean, you know, there, there's multiple tempos with which we operate. You know, a bunch of different formations that we have in the playbook, and you know, run schemes, you know, protections, you know, drop back passes, play action, screens, quick game. All, all that stuff is in there, and uh, you know, really, what you see on a week to week basis, uh, you know, is predicated on how you want to attack. Uh, you know what the defense is is uh, is showing you. So, to a certain extent, you, you you saw you know probably the foundation of our offense and what we can do from a operational standpoint. But in terms of, of plays and and things along those lines, there's there, there's still some <laughs> I guess left in the reserve, so to speak. What do you need to see from the offense to take a step forward? What do they have to do in your mind? Yeah, I think just general improvement across the board. You know, in the run game, we got to do a better job. You know, uh, reestablishing the line of scrimmage and, and uh, you know getting good knockback, and, and definitely have to see the biggest strides taken in, in pass protection. And that's not just the line. You know, it's the O line, it's the running backs, the tight ends, the quarterbacks, the running backs, uh, and then just want to see an increased level of, of understanding of our scheme, and then you know definitely execution. You know, amongst all, all the other positions. There are a couple of new names on that offensive line from from last year. How much of the 
I don't want to say struggles, but it's like, how much of what happened last week was a chemistry issue, do you think? Not used to, to playing together in a game situation. Yeah, I think not just for the O-line, but for, for everybody in all, all three phases. You know, you, you know, add, add 40 new people, you know, a new staff, three new, three new schemes, and, uh, you know, doing it for the first time where they're keeping score and you can't, you know, blow the whistle and say run it again during practice and there's really not a repercussion for a, for a, for a negative play. So I think that played a part of it. But, uh, yeah, I, I think the offensive line is probably the mo most unique of positions where their performance is, is um, dictated by – the guy that's adjacent to them throughout the course of the game. So certainly, you know, those guys working together uh, is probably a little different than any other position on the field. Um, based on the performance last week, and it, it's a small sample at this point, um, but do you think that Shockey may have Michigan State's attention given his performance? Um, I, you would have to ask uh, – uh, Michigan State staff that I, I I do know that you know to come out and post a career high you know nine catches 122 and a touchdown you know two huge receptions on the post route and then that play that you know set up the final score and, and and just real happy for Shockey in general you know a guy that had 25 catches at Pitt last year and you know was behind Addison who won the Blitnikoff Award and was looking to become more of a uh, you know primary target and threat you know to come out the way he did and you know once again voted captain by his teammates. Uh, I know Shockey's going to prepare the right way. I know he's going to be excited about the opportunity. And, you know, certainly, you know, uh, Michigan State's defense is going to prevent a very, uh, you know, difficult, um, you know, challenge for us. That's all I have right now. Awesome. Thank you, George. Dave or Joe, you got a question? Yeah. Uh, Coach, uh, you had an interesting story during the taking the TV show about Tyson Durant. I'm not sure if anybody else is aware of what happened. Yeah, George. I'm. Uh, you know, Tyson's a guy that it's a, a walk on for us. You know, had an unbelievable you know, off season, great spring ball. The strength and conditioning staff raved about his leadership and work ethic, and you know, was banged up a little bit during camp, so we you know, he missed some time. But uh, you know, had the the interception to seal the game, and then we were able to you know, reward him with a scholarship on uh, on Sunday and or not say Sunday football Sunday on uh, the day after the game Fr Fr <laughs> Friday in the team meeting. So uh, you know. Had our PowerPoint up, went through all of our performance indicators, you know, positive, negatives from the game, did our players of the week, and then kind of ended the meeting and you know, said, yeah, we have one more thing, and, you know, pulled up the last slide, and it was Tyson's picture on there, and he said, you are now on scholarship, and the, the room went nuts. They mobbed him, and it was, uh, you know, just great great to see a kid who uh, who earned it be, uh, be put on scholarship. Dave, anything? I got one more. Yeah, when you, you know, you know, leading up to the season, you talked about you couldn't wait until you have these gr this group of guys on the field in a real game against an opposition and not just scrimmaging each other. Um, how does that make this week different than last week in that regard, now that they've been through an actual game working together as a unit? Yeah, I, I think the positive aspect is, um, you know, talking about culture and, and our ability to respond to prosperity and adversity and you know, going through a game where there were multiple opportunities for us to throw our hands up and hang our heads and, uh, you know, turn it down. You know, we kept fighting and kept, kept scratching and clawing and find a way to end it and, you know, really, you know, reinforce the message that our staff has been, you know, delivering to our kids for, for a, an extended period of time. Now we we're going to eliminate the pregame jitters and anxiety. You know, we played together and, you know, hopefully the adage that, you know, a team improves the most between week one and two holds true. And, you know, going up to a very tough environment against a great football team that's very well coached and talented and, you know, have an opportunity to go up there and compete for 60 minutes. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, I was going to talk to a special teams coach. Even though you uh, had an extra point block and missed a field goal, I thought your two young kickers, Gettman and Axos, played pretty well. For yeah, you. They did really well. You can't, can't leave four points on the board, you know. You know, the, the, the field goal, you know, that's understandable. But the, the PAT between the snap, the hold, and the kick, we got to have that because at that point, you know, you're really icing the game, and uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, Nico for a guy first time in college, you know, a couple touchbacks, a couple. I don't think there was a kick that was, you know, outside of the the, the end zone, and our coverage unit did a real nice job. And then Getman was a you know heralded uh, transfer out of the FCS ranks at Sacred Heart and came in and you know averaged 47 a kick with a long 62 and did a great job flipping the field for us. Anything else, guys?
Coach, uh, thank you for your time today. We look forward to Saturday's game in Michigan State at 4 o'clock on the Big Ten Network. Thank let's, you. Let's do it. Go Zips. Thank you.